All right, ladies and gentlemen, 10.3 Arcs of Circles. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be rad. It's going to be super duper cool because you're going to be able to calculate the measure of an arc based on its central angle or the fraction of the circle that it is, and you're going to be able to apply congruent chords, arcs, and angle theorems to proofs. Who doesn't like to do that? A couple quick basics first. We name arcs by their points. A minor arc has two points. So we'll say arc A, B, and we put like a little curvy thing over it. Not like a segment line, but a curvy type of line. All right, major arc has three points. So let's say this is point D over here. So what I'm going to have is arc A, D, B would be this arc all the way around the circle to point B right there. Each arc has a center. And for this minor arc, that center would be C. An arc with endpoints on the diameter of the circle is called a, hmm, it's half a circle. It is a semicircle. Oh, yeah. Two examples of the semicircle over here in this diagram would be AHB with the arc over it, or ADB, ADB. The measure of the minor arc is equal to the measure of its central angle. Now, something important to note about arc measure. We're also going to be talking about arc length. Now, length is like in centimeters or meters or inches, whereas Arc measure is always in degrees. It's very, very important to distinguish the two. So going off that note, are arcs with the same measure necessarily congruent? Remember, arc measure has to deal with degrees. So if they're both 30 degrees, are they necessarily congruent? Well, only if they're part of the same circle or congruent circles. So this one asks us to find the measure of arc EDC. Hmm. So how could we do that? Feel free to pause it and see if you can come up with a good idea. If you're a little lost, keep playing, and we're going to go through it right now. I realize that this right here is a semicircle. Half the circle, that's 180 degrees. If I add, add everything up and set it equal to 180 and solve for x, I can be on my way to arc EDC. Now I just need to combine my like terms. And finish solving for x. So I have 19x equals 171. Divide by 19, I get x equals 9. Alright, so if I have x equals 9, well, that's not my answer. I need to plug it back in and find EDC. Well, these two added together give me the measure of arc EDC. And once I plug everything in, I get 121. Degrees. Remember, arc measure is measured in degrees. A couple of easy examples to lead into the next stuff. What fractional part of a circle is an arc that measures 240? Well, it's easy. I just take 240, divide it by 360, bada boom, bada bing, I've got two thirds. So that's the fractional part of the circle. 315, well, 315 over 360. Bada boom, bada bing, simplify, I get 7 eighths. So let's find the measure of an arc that is 5 ninths of its circle. Well, if it's 5 ninths of its circle, I need to figure out, well, what degree measure would that equal? So if I take 5 ninths and I set it equal to x over 360, that's going to tell me right here what degree measure of the circle that it is. So I take 5 ninths and multiply it by 360 on each side. So that cancels. So 5 ninths times 360. Well, let's see here. We get 200, so 200 degrees. Now these congruence relationships in circles are super duper 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 important. Basically, if we have congruent chords, we've got congruent arcs, and congruent central angles. If we've got congruent arcs, 
the chords and central angles are congruent as well. And if we have congruent central angles, we know that the chords are congruent and we know that the arcs are congruent. So if you have one, you have them all. Let's take a look at this first proof. I'm given that A, B, and C, D are congruent. So those are two chords that are congruent. And I want to prove that A, C, and B, D are congruent. Hmm, okay, I have an idea. If I prove that these two chords, sorry, these two arcs are congruent because the chords are congruent, and then I go ahead and use some subtraction property, Ooh. subtract C, B, now I have two congruent arcs, which is exactly what I want. So three steps, let's do it. So after the given, what I have here is that arc AB is congruent to arc CD because we have congruent chords in a congruent circle, then our arcs are congruent. Awesome. And from here I can go right to my proof by a subtraction property. And there you have it. Arc AC is congruent to arc BD by a subtraction property. We subtracted arc CB. So in this problem we have circle B. We have D as the midpoint of arc AC, and we want to prove that BD bisects angle ABC. Now, if you think you have, want to try this one on your own, go for it. Press play when you're ready. Otherwise, I'm going to hop right to it. Well, if D is the midpoint of AC, that would mean that these two arcs are congruent. Ooh, if these two arcs are congruent, wouldn't I also have congruent central angles? I think so, because that's going to help me prove that BD bisects the larger angle ABC. Oh, sounds like I'm already there. Let's, uh, let's hop to it. So I've got arc AD congruent to arc DC by the definition of midpoint. Now I can move on to the central angles. So we know those two angles are congruent because if we have congruent arcs and congruent circles, then our congruent central angles. So remember, they have to be central angles for those angles to be congruent. It's very, very important. All right, last one. My prove. We know BD bisects angle ABC by the definition of bisect because what it does is it splits it into two congruent angles. Awesome. We got our quiz tomorrow over 10-1 to 10-3, so make sure you are ready for it. And there's your homework.